All right, so welcome back in today. We're going to dive into Robinhood doing some very interesting things within the crypto market. How will this affect them overall from a long-term status? And also, how will this affect Bitcoin and all of crypto? My name is Paul Barrow. Welcome back into TechPath. Let's dive into it today. Of course, Robinhood announced a couple of new items that many of you probably have heard some of. Uh, one of the biggest ones is the DeFi wallet. The DeFi wallet for Robinhood and enabling that, you get on a wait list, much like how they roll out a lot of their products when they had their wallets rolled out a few months ago. Same kind of scenario. I do want to kind of show you guys a couple of videos that they've kind of released that uh, are, are a good example of kind of how they go to market with uh, their approach toward marketing. This is a video right here kind of showing me over the overall function of what they're trying to do with the uh, the app now, which they're getting deeper and deeper into crypto. I love the fact that they're using apes on this. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, as if we are the apes or if they are just playing on the ape coin. But I think the key here with Robinhood is that they are making some pretty big moves into the future of crypto. And I think they see a lot more to it. This is a pretty big thing, thing because this really starts to change the dynamic, much like Robinhood did within the dynamic of stock trading, no fee stock, stock trading, uh, in the sense of trading within the crypto exchanges. And that's where I think companies like Coinbase, you look at crypto.com and many others, unless there's some sort of yield benefit or some sort of benefit from a um, tackle, tactical standpoint, there are some factors in within the Robinhood app when I was kind of diving into it that you need to know about, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit about those. But the key here, I think, is as they really release this, uh, their blog post really kind of goes to the point. Robinhood announces the non-custodial wallet. Uh, I think this is going to be a big thing in the sense of both NFTs, but the ability to, of course, really kind of focus in. Let me kind of zoom in on that right there. Trade, swap, crypto, no network fees, store NFTs and connect to NFT marketplaces. There's some interesting things within the video that I wanna show you that they highlight within this blog post, which by the way, the video is unlisted. And I, at, at the time that we reviewed it, only had a, a few hundred views. So uh, it's interesting to see how they're going to roll this out, but they are going to also include earning yield using their assets and then access a variety of obviously crypto assets. Key thing here, and I wanna kinda of go to this video real quick, there's a couple things. I'm going to kind of uh, show it. There's no sound to this, so I'll narrate over it a little bit. But the first thing you're going to notice on uh, this video is the fact that they've got USDC coin involved in this. Uh, you can kind of see some of the others. Also enabling Face ID, which I think is going to be another big factor for them in, in terms of use case. Right there, you're going to see swap, swipe to swap, uh, which is going to be, I think, a big, big factor with especially the fact that you've got no fees involved in this. This is, I think, really going to level them up. And if you look at all the features here on all these screens right here, let me kind of just freeze it. So you've got USD coin coming in. So we're going to see a stable coin coming into the platform. Obviously, all the traditionals, including DAI in there as well, it appears to be. They've got obviously a great, you know, I think they've always had a really good UI from an aspect of user experience and continues to be kind of one of those things that... Um, they kind of build on overall. The other aspect is notice the place bid right there on virtual ceramics on that uh, uh, NFT right there. So place bid. I'm just wondering if this is going to be a wallet to wallet type of integration or if this is going to be something that would be integrated into external marketplaces. So there's a lot there from an NFT side. Remember this being a non-custodial wallet, much like Coinbase wallet, a handful of others that are very popular out there right now to essentially target what is happening within MetaMask. Because I think MetaMask is the one that will most likely take the hardest hit here in terms, especially of the overall space when it comes to DeFi wallets and the ability to do swaps and obviously the, the ability to store maybe eventually um, access um, NFTs in other platforms as well. So if you want to get to this, just go over to Robinhood <laughs> Web3 Wallet and you can go in and uh, hit your join list. If you're a Robinhood user, it's going to pop up in your app. One thing to be aware of within the Robinhood app from a crypto standpoint, and this is something that I've discovered over time in use of Robinhood, 
they haven't really uh, escalated it yet, and that is the issue of crypto transfers. And what I mean by that, inbound crypto transfers pretty much unlimited, but when you're moving crypto to another place, let's say, for instance, you would parked Bitcoin or Ethereum in Robinhood or acquired it in Robinhood and wanted to move it, say, over to Celsius or over to Voyager to, for whatever reason, maybe some yield applications or using it for some other purpose. The issue is that right now there is a $5,000 daily limit on transferring crypto out. So that is and could be a problem for a lot of users. Now, there's a lot of people that don't have $5,000 in crypto, and that's fine, no big deal. But you're going to have it at some point. Now, the goal is, I think, for Robinhood, is that they've slowly escalated up their trading limits as well as their um, immediate uh, limits on daily transfers, both from bank and also back to your bank if you're you know, going back to fiat. But just understand that there is a $5,000 transfer limit uh, meaning, meaning you've got to pay fees twice. Uh, and I actually tested it with Ethereum not too long ago. It's still the same uh, here recently. Now, will this change within the DeFi wallet? I would assume that the DeFi wallet would not have any limits on it because that would really change the dynamic of a DeFi wallet. But I'm assuming that that is not the case. So we'll see how this kind of rolls out. There are some other aspects to this that are pretty interesting, and that is one being uh, the earn 1% interest on uninvested brokerage cash. So again, this is just money in your bank that you typically would be setting on with at 0% interest. So if you do have uh, cash, meaning USD, uh, in your Robinhood account, you're going to be getting a 1% interest rate on that. Additionally, they launched, and this is something that just recently launched, and that was in, in introducing their stock lending uh, platform. You do have to engage this within the app itself. So that in itself, I think, is kind of cool in the, fin in the sense that it can bring you to the lending table to where you can start earning money on the stocks that you own. And uh, it's pretty simple. It's just a, you know, a process. It's kind of like what they call here from fractional shares uh, to IPO access. They're building this, their version of stock lending empowers customers to basically take your investments uh, while you're not going to sell them, and then you can go out and, of course, lend those uh, for other tools in, of which they can go out and market those, and you get passive income uh, recurring back in. So that's a good, um, a good feature, I think. And again, here is the thing with uh, the waitlist members now of Crypto Wallet. Lightning Network is coming to Robinhood. That's going to be a factor, I think, that will be a major component on how Robinhood goes to market. And they do need the stablecoin to launch with. I think they most likely will launch with USDC, uh, which looks to be the case. The other thing that is happening is there's a lot of players that are starting to invest in Robinhood. Now, the couple that you'll recognize and, and pretty easy to spot is Sam Bankman fried This, of course, he buys a 7.6% stake in Robinhood. Again, Good move, I think, 56 million shares on the uh, trading. This is just here recently. Uh, obviously, this was right before the launch of the DeFi wallet, so I'm kind of curious. It's a little bit interesting there. Uh, 56 million, 40, 482 million at market close. Uh, and remember, Robin, Robinhood has been trading down, so it's around 10 bucks a share right now. Is that a good buy? Still questionable with sentiment and their tie into crypto overall. Crypto in the bear market right now. We've got continued pressure from a lot of things, from recession to uh, other aspects of inflation, as well as the as the issues with things like Luna and and all of what we've seen with UST. All of that I think puts a lot of uh, pressure on Robinhood, even with launching this. But it does give them into the game, and I think this is a, if you're going to start honing your skills in crypto. And this is the thing that I tell everybody about the bear market is that this is the time in which you need to hone your skills. Invest in yourself, invest in your education and understanding of crypto, invest in your tool set, what you're using. All those kind of things have to be done now so that you're ready for when a market starts to move. And I think, you know, we're going to have little flashes in between and you're going to get a chance to do some practice runs on this to really be able to generate uh, some nice little recovery gains. But the other aspect is, is it starts to train you on how to trade in these kinds of times. And as we start to come out of this, because I think we're a little over 400 days out before the next halving, as we start to come out of this and we do see a cycle start to pe uh, pin up 
uh, for Bitcoin and crypto. I think though the the and I'm still questioning on whether the happening will have a true um, impact on the market as much as it has had in the in the past. I think right now what we're dealing with is more economic and global impact scenarios there. But it is something that I will continue to watch very closely. Kathy Wood also uh, buys Robinhood. Uh, and I think, again, Kathy has been a big um, proponent of innovation. And of course, Robinhood is not one that sets down and does not innovate. They're just constantly innovating, which I think is one of the things that will really start to play into this. Could Robinhood become a true crypto hub for the future and what that might look like in the next 18 months could be much different than what we've anticipated Robinhood to be in the future. All right, so additionally, what you've got is kind of the historical area of Robinhood. And let me kind of break this down, showing their user growth back in 2015, half a million. Uh, you can kind of see the move up to 15 million uh, currently right now in 2022. Big push in 2021, obviously for obvious reasons, big push on both crypto and the stock market. Uh, but nice moves here. I mean, if you think about their last real four years, let's say pandemic, they were at six to 10 million. Then post pandemic, you saw 13 to 22 million in 21, and then an adjustment down to 15.9. Again, a lot of this is crypto fatigue and also market fatigue that kind of pl plunders into that. Uh, assets under management, just to show the size of, of Robinhood, not necessarily a player just yet. You know, only at 80 billion, you see E-Trade, which is kind of the low end at 600 billion. But the big guys, uh, Swab and TD Ameritrade, 1.3 trillion, 3.8 trillion. Uh, so Robinhood has a long way to go in terms of potential growth. Uh, additionally here, if you look at their average account size versus competitors, Robinhood, again, not big accounts, 3,500 bucks. E-Trade, that's 100 grand. Ameritrade, TD Ameritrade, 110. And then Schwab at almost a quarter of a million on average. These are average size accounts. Uh, competitors, alternatives, uh, you can kind of see there, you know, investable securities. It's the typical, you know, layout that they've done. But of course, Robinhood, main competitor right here is the isolation. You're, you need to understand it. I think this is the one that is going to be interesting because as Coinbase has the Coinbase wallet, which I use like that wallet and it is a non-custodial just so this kind of feature set i think is one that is needed especially with the ability to intermingle and possibly connect quickly like with coinbase being you can run a coinbase wallet without the coinbase app and or if you have both you can interact with those so the ability which i think is one of the reasons why Robinhood is doing that because they need dry powder to be able to ingest into the system so they can, they can actually do trades, much like Coinbase is doing with Coinbase Wallet. So I see this same kind of um, you know, overall strategy here. The differences, I think, will be the number of users and the race back to 25 to 30 million. Now, I think if Robinhood could jump in and really take this up in terms of growth, if they can stay, let's say the 2020 to 21, 13 to 20 set. So that was a 7 million uh, you know, user move. If that could happen in 23 to 24, when we come out of the recession and see a 7 million, this could put them some, let's, let's assume that they're going to still continue to see downward trends from the 15.9. So worst case scenario, let's say they're somewhere around 12 million by end of recession. If a recession is eight months or 12 months, let's say somewhere around 12 million, and it gets them back up to maybe around 20 million uh, as we start to eke out of this recession. This could be one of those projects and one of those platforms, Robinhood, with the timing and with crypto markets that could really accelerate massive growth because of the adoption curve that we're gonna continue to see. Now, it's not all pointing at Robinhood saying, hey, this is the, the new end all be all, whether it's crypto or trading platforms. JP Morgan still sees this as a doom and gloom um, scenario for the Robinhood stock. And I would have to agree somewhat if you're investing in Robinhood, the stock. But I think Robinhood is in a position right now that they're investing in themselves. In the downtime, they're starting to build the treasure trove of assets, features, and benefits that really can start to layer them into the world-class financial unit you know, ecosystem 
on a global scale to really try to compete when we start to see the market move in an upward fashion. So just to kind of look at the history here of Robinhood, one of the things you can kind of see here, diversification station just here recently. Here's, uh, of course, um, with Sam Bankman, he jumps in, uh, running out of people to, to rescue. This is in Q1. Uh, Robinhood takes aim at the UK. This was on regulatory. Goldman has a low hopes for crypto, all this kind of layering in. But you can kind of see the, the slide from Robinhood's position. If you were back in on their IPO, definitely took a big loss on this one because it is now trading at the 10. Now, will it? the question is, will it go under uh, 10 bucks by much? Right now trading 978 there. Likelihoods, this might be able to be a bargain basement buy here as they continue to see adjustments here, even with things like the DeFi wallet. However, Remember that there are a lot of people right now that are starting to consolidate their crypto funds into more traditional and trusted platforms. So I would imagine there's going to be a handful of platforms out there that are kind of on the fence that could really take a lot of hits in terms of overall growth because of people either moving into some of those trusted platforms Whatever that might be, if it's Coinbase, a Robinhood, a Voyager, a Celsius, any of those that may be the case, maybe it's a crypto.com for you. But I, an I anticipate we're going to see some of these marginal uh, exchanges and trading platforms start to see some little bit of pressure. And Robinhood could sweep up and grab a lot of users in this uh, ongoing kind of scenario that we're dealing with with crypto right now. So again, Watching this one very closely, obviously, as we start to see the crypto DeFi wallet roll out for Robinhood, we'll test it, uh, give you guys a, a kind of a rundown on it. But for now, just remember the one thing that I would say with Robinhood is you cannot transfer out the 5K or more per day. Uh, that's probably the one disadvantage. But if you plan on keeping it in there, it doesn't matter. If you, if you are moving it around uh, crypto or there's Bitcoin or USDC eventually when they've got stablecoin in there, uh, that's going to have to change. And I think they know that. Anyway. If you guys are listening in over on the podcast right now, make sure and tune in here to the YouTube channel. This is the place for where when we break down not only our analysis, we're going to be doing a ton of stuff this week, continuing on Bitcoin. We'll drop another CPI data set today. So make sure and check that out. If you're not already in the CPI, make sure and click the link below. You'll learn a lot more about the Crypto Power Index and how we measure tokens on sentiment and also on amplification, two different scores that really help us understand when to jump in, whether it's at the bottom or when it's starting to move in an upward motion. So again, if you guys want to reach me, it's out on Twitter at Paul Barron. We'll catch you next time right here on TechBath.